Well, this is an interesting article here on the Herald Sun that was published on the 8th of March 2014. Mount Stromlo Observatory near Canberra is to get a $150 million centre to combat space junk. A new $150 million centre to combat the growing scourge of space junk will be set up at Mount Stromlo Observatory near Canberra. Scientists have warned that the 300,000 pieces of debris already circling the globe could mass together, creating a devastating avalanche of junk, similar to that depicted in the Hollywood blockbuster Gravity, that could potentially take out most satellites in space. In the film, space junk from a destroyed satellite slams into a shuttle, leaving two astronauts adrift in space. On its second orbit, the debris causes further havoc. The Space Environment Management Cooperative Research Centre will be run by Australian scientist Dr Ben Green, a world expert in space junk and chief executive of the EOS Space Systems. His firm tracks space junk and provides warnings of imminent collisions. Dr Green said that the centre would build on Australian expertise in measurement, monitoring, analysis and management of space debris to preserve the space environment. There are now more than 300,000 pieces of debris in Earth orbit, he said. There is now so much debris that it is colliding with itself, making an already big problem even bigger. A catastrophic avalanche of collisions that would quickly destroy all satellites is now possible. The centre will bring together space debris mitigation technologies and experts from around the world for the first time in one place to workshop solutions to a problem that could cause global chaos and cost hundreds of billions of dollars. The bulk of the world's navigation, weather forecasting and communication systems rely on satellite technology, not to mention military. And if space collisions continue on current trends, the entire space environment could be rendered useless. And this is why I say, guys, that I think some of these incoming objects that we're seeing that get filmed and we see this footage turning up on YouTube, I think some of them may be these satellites because we are seeing the magnetosphere weakening and this is causing an atmospheric drag on the orbits of these satellites. Now, some of them can be put into a lower orbit to accommodate this but some of these other ones are probably not made to do this they haven't actually put this as something that they have factored into um, constructing the satellites so i think that this is why they're now experiencing this problem with the space junk as well because it's now also starting to reduce in this orbit and as they said it's almost like it's moving together to create clumps of space junk, probably almost like you see when you put something on water and it actually moves together, like two boats will eventually move together and then become um, in synchronicity as they move on the waves, you know, they become the same. So we may be seeing this also with the space junk. So I find this really significant. Um, then it goes on to say that... Um, Australia is one of the world's most space-dependent nations with satellites delivering security and services to an isolated population dispersed across a huge continent. The initial focus of the new centre will be to reduce the rate of collisions to minimise new debris before using ground-based lasers to destroy the junk. I think that they're using Australia too because we are such a wide continent um, the way we're basically geologically created that we do have a lot of these satellites that end up colliding in the middle of the continent. And so then it goes on to say, um, Chair of the CRC Board, Professor Mary O'Kane said the work of the centre was fundamental to Australian society and its economy. And I just want to go back to here too, these ground-based lasers. Well, I'd be interested to see more information about that. And then it ends with the federal government has contributed $20 million to the centre, which has attracted $40 million from the participants that include the Japanese government and the Australian, sec uh, the Australian National University Lockheed Martin. Well, that's military. 
Optus, NASA, RMIT and EOS Space Dis Systems and another 90 million worth of research infrastructure. So they're taking this seriously. Anyway, interesting. So um, I'll put this article underneath and you can check this out yourself. And as always, peace out.